I'm joined with Ben from Tricep, and uh, you guys uh, do a lot of things with biofuels, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So we do um, custom bioprinting and biofabrication um, down at the University of Wollongong, where we're based at. Um, so we do custom development of bioprinters um, that allow us to implant uh, bioinks that we develop in-house um, with cells and we can basically um, put them into human bodies um, and, and use that for like uh, different fields. So we can do like cartilage regeneration, we can do um, eye regeneration, that sort of thing. Um, so it's, it's mainly we, we work with clinicians around Australia um, for specific aspects and then we develop hardware and we develop um, inks and, and formulations from the, the chemical side of things um, that allow us to do biological sort of um, implantations into, into people. Yeah. Awesome. Now you've got some cool toys here. Can we have a look at some yeah, of yeah, these? Yeah, for sure. For and, sure. and just run through what exactly they are. Yeah, so we, we, have, a range of, we have a range of different 3D printers um, that we use to... Uh, basically convey ideas to clinicians as well as um, use within our within our bioprinters. Um, so one example is a, a full colour 3D printer that we have. Um, this allows us to basically um, easily translate ideas between clinicians and um, engineers and, and chemists that we, like that we are, because um, obviously trying to translate an idea that is um, quite engineering based is hard mm -hmm. for a clinician, and then the same vice versa when the clinician talks, I don't know what's going on. So, th um, so this is fully three D printed. Yeah, so this is straight off the. Because I don't think I've ever seen anything yeah. in color. Before. No, no. So it's it's relatively new in the space. Um, but there, there are a few companies around that are doing it. Um, we have a, a printer that's called a, a Mamaki from Japan, mm -hmm. um, but that basically allows us to do full colour representation of models um, and uh, easily allows translation of ideas across um, different fields and, and different uh, people within, within the space. Um, so that one is, is, a, is a, um, like a model that we've generated. Mm -hmm. um, but then we've also got this, which is straight off a 3D scan. So that's, um, we have a couple of 3D scanners down uh, mm -hmm. where we are. So we're able to um, basically 3D scan the ear and then we take this STL. This is the exact rip. So we're able to just show the, the translation from a scan data to printed data. Right. Um, but we're also able to take this and then use it for um, printing... Uh, silicon structures for um, the use of prosthetics. Mm -hmm. So we work with a prosthetist and um, a surgeon, Payel, up in uh, the, where is she? She's at RPA. Mm -hmm. um, so we work with them uh, to basically do prosthetic work uh, as well as cartilage regeneration for people that are born with microtia. Um, so when that's when you have no cartilage in your ear. So we basically um, do, we've developed a printer to reprint the cartilage um, so we can print out the structure and then implant cells into that structure and then that gets um, put into the patient's ear uh, and basically your, your ear comes back so we're able to generate that that hard sort of cartilage area yeah wow that's some pretty cool stuff yeah and then um, some of the other stuff we have which is kind of cool I guess mm -hmm. um, is some of the metal printers um, so we use metal 3d printing um, basically we can develop uh, we, we work with titanium stainless steels aluminiums that sort of thing mm -hmm. um, but we can print in um, safe uh, biocompatible metals um, so it allows us to do stuff like hip implants um, if we ever need to do something like that okay. um, but the main purpose that we use it for is is that this sort of thing so these are coaxial nozzles that we use on our bioprinters uh -huh. um, so this allows this allows the printing of um, a, a core and a shell structure so okay. our core structure has cells impregnated into it right. and then our shell structure is is a a protective layer basically mm -hmm. um, preventing any sort of um, contamination to the cells mm -hmm. and then we put that into bioprinters so we we formulize the ink from natural substances like uh, gelatin yep. um, we put a couple of uh, functional groups on there and allows us to print out this softer gel that we can implant directly into the body um, and that, that particular project's for cartilage regeneration so it gets um, printed into the knee and then from there we're able to UV cure it and basically um, increase the, the modulus of the material so we can make it stiffer um, and it can be used for, for cartilage or basically allow regeneration of cartilage to happen. Yeah. Wow, this is some pretty uh, advanced stuff that has so many applications. So, yeah, yeah. You guys must be flat out. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're quite busy but the, the applications are quite broad so um, we, because we have basically a team of chemists and a, a team of engineers, um, we're able to like basically find the, the, the problem within, um, within surgeries and within, like within clinics. Um, and then we work with the clinicians to sort of develop a solution around that. Yep. 
Wow. And is this a mock-up of one of your so printers? This, yeah, these, these are one of the printers that we use for um, uh, research purposes. So mm -hmm. it's called the 3D Ready, um, which was developed completely in-house, and it's designed to use um, our bioinks that we've also formulated in-house. Mm -hmm. um, so the main purpose of it, w when you purchase a bioprinter, it's quite a large capital investment, it's about $500,000. Mm -hmm. um, compared to this one, which is about $20,000. So it's a lot cheaper on that side of things and allows researchers um, to basically get into working with bioprinting. Um, so we have uh, about 20 of these out in the wild or like um, out at research institutes with partners. Um, and we're basically field testing these and, and looking to make another 50 this year and then go, go on from there. So um, this is effectively a low cost sol um, solution to bioprinting and allows for a high range of customization on what we want to do. So it's got cooling capabilities, heating capabilities, um, twin extrusion, that sort of thing. Yeah. Wow, that is some amazing uh, technology. Now from a consumer standpoint, yep. you probably, I'm assuming your products are more specifically medically based. Yeah. So your clients are the aren't the general consumers no it's more so the the, the medical uh, companies yeah so so i guess the the largest sort of um uh, barrier towards uh, getting this out into to the general consumer is regular um, regulation perspectives mm -hmm. um obviously 3d printing is relatively new um, especially in the case of like government bodies and um regulatory bodies it's quite difficult to sort of say oh you know like this is safe to use like we're not doing anything crazy here so it's ba we're basically working through that um and getting to that point however the how we're getting to that point is going through animal trials with a bunch of different technologies um and demonstrating that what we're doing is is safe to use um and then we can move forward from there yeah so um probably the one of the more advanced ones is working with um peter chung down at the or dr peter chung i should say mm -hmm. down at the um st vincent's hospital in melbourne um so that's the cartilage regeneration project so they're doing um development of of bio inks that we we've done in-house from from gelatin um and then we've just gone through a large sheep trial um and then we'll move move forward from there so.